of you who have joined us in person via Facebook, Live, and Zoom. For those of you who are here in person, please take this moment to ensure that your cell phones are silenced. We begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation, so I invite you to get still and close your eyes. As we play the I Am Remembering chant, you may choose to chant along with it or simply follow along silently repeating this mantra to yourself. If your mind wanders, simply bring it back to this mantra, I am remembering who I am.
And so, as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you with us, virtually or in person. Let's begin with our chant. God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this holy place. God is in this place. Love. Let's join together in prayer. Knowing as I take a deep breath in, I can recognize and appreciate and know and feel the presence of God. This God that is in all things at all time. This God that is, that grounds me in this earth, that roots me to all knowing that God is the sky, God is nature, God is birds, God is the laughter of a child. God, there isn't anywhere that God is not. I know that God, God is in the song of a bird. I know that God is in this place, in our music, in everyone here. And knowing that God is truly love, God is joy, that above, below, around, behind, God is always there for us. And I recognize and know that for myself. And it makes me feel good to know that I am part of all the beauty there is. I am part of all the healing, all the joyful presence that there is. I am that, I am of that. There is no question, no doubt, and that is good. And I know that this is my truth. And in knowing this truth, I'm so grateful to know it for everyone else, everyone here, the world, the life, my family, your family, everyone. I recognize and know this truth for everyone, all of us. And since I know that that is the truth, I know that we are all blessed. I know that everything we need to hear today from Reverend Sidney, from the music, from everything that we need to hear, everything we need to see, feel, touch. Might be a smile of somebody else that you look at today in this sanctuary. And I'm so grateful to feel this, to know this, to absolutely get this to my core. And so I say thank you. Thank you, God. And I release my word into this perfect law, knowing it is so, knowing it is done, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Okay, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. All right.
Somebody said, why do you do these things? She said, this is what I came here for. She said, do all you can with what you have in the place you are, in the time you've got. Do all you songs. I'm so glad you did that. I used to do it all the time and I just love it. Do all you can. Do all you can. Ah, hi. <laughs> Welcome. I am Reverend Sydney, and I'm so glad that you're here tonight. Um, okay, your word has power behind it. Let's talk about that. Ah, so Ernest Holmes wrote this. We withdraw from the contemplation of existing circumstances and without contending against them. Ding, ding, ding. Hold on to that thought. We actually create a new set of circumstances through consciously reversing the law that produce the conditions that ought to be changed. That's a mouthful, right? Okay. Let me just break it down. We withdraw from the contemplation of existing circumstances. So turning away from the stuff that is scaring us, turning away from the stuff that is irritating us, turning away and stopping, just literally stopping the thought about the ick, the ick in the world, the ick in ourselves, the ick in our families, whatever it is that is causing us to feel ick, we turn away from them and we don't argue. So without contending against them, we don't argue with them. You know, it's, it's arguing with the deck chairs on the Titanic. I told you not to be painted red. What? The ship's going down. Well, then you should have been green. No, the ship's going down. There's an iceberg, yes. I don't want there to be an iceberg. Now that's, that's contending. I don't want the ship to go down. The ship's going down. So without arguing against those, without contending against those things, without giving them power, without giving them energy, without giving them our attention, we turn away from those and we turn to the stuff that we want. Does that make sense? Okay, we want to move into the consciousness or the energy, the feeling of that thing that we want, right? The feeling of that which we want, the consciousness of that which we want. Wishes fulfilled is what Wayne Dyer called it, wishes fulfilled. And he actually got that from a guy named Neville Goddard, 
who talked about this, which is that we move into the consciousness of that thing as if it's already so now. Now that takes a lot of commitment and conviction. So the biggest issue that you and I are going to ever have with this teaching, I think, is our own resistance. We resist, we resist, we resist. We resist believing that it's going to work. We resist, we resist believing, or, or rather, actually using the teaching. You know, I think that what we often do is we come in to church on a Wednesday or a Sunday. We feel really good while we're here. We hear the music and we get to hang out with each other. We have some coffee. We have some cake if it's a birthday. We have muffins if it's not. And we have a really good time. Then we go home and, man, <sighs> so it's about using it. It's about working it. It's about actually practicing the teaching. You know, all of the power in this universe is present and active in every moment. So the power and presence of God doesn't get less effective or more effective because we, get to, we become nicer people or we floss after every meal or because we don't eat meat on a Friday. It is a consistent law, a consistent presence, a consistent power. It, has, it is and has always been responding in exact relation to our faith, our belief, and our willingness, our willingness to align with it. In other words, stepping away from the resistance, stepping away from the contemplation of that which appears to be not God, and not contending. So here's the kicker about that. It will work. This law works regardless of our knowing, our faith, our belief, or our willingness. It's still going to work. It's still going to work. You know, Ernest Holmes said that the law is no respecter of persons, and it really isn't. And ignorance of spiritual law doesn't excuse you from the results of it. And that sounds pretty harsh. But you know what? This is the law of cause and effect. It was taught by ancient peoples as karmic law, right? Karmic law. And it was taught by Jesus as it is done unto you as you believe. So this is not anything new. It wasn't introduced to us by by anybody on TV, it, well, maybe it was if you hadn't heard any of these old wisdom teachings, but spiritual law doesn't care what you and I believe. It just responds. It just responds. You know, Ernest Holmes wrote that spiritual law is just as true, certain, and consistent as the physical laws of gravity, electricity, thermodynamics. He wrote that this law does not respect persons. It is no respecter of persons. It will always work. So electricity really, really doesn't care if you use it to turn a light on or to put a fork in the socket. It's going to do what electricity does regardless. It will act like electricity. Gravity will always act like gravity, whether I'm nice to it or not nice to it. It will always do the same thing. That's the same thing with spiritual law. I think that a lot of us don't necessarily give it full sway because we think, well, how can that be? Gravity we've known about forever. Electricity we've known about forever. The spiritual law thing sounds kind of trendy. Sounds kind of trendy. It's actually not. You know, the thing about spiritual law, the thing about any laws is they're always in existence. It just takes us a while to discover them. You know, electricity was here before it was discovered. The principle of gravity was absolutely, I guarantee you, working before the apple hit Isaac Newton on the head, the myth, right? But I promise you, gravity was working before that. And spiritual law has always been and will always be. You know, when we first um, come into this teaching and we hear that life is going to reflect what's going on in, inside of us, you know, at first it's very freeing, but it's also, it can fill you with some dread, because you think, oh my gosh, I can now have this freedom. I can create my life. And then at the same time, you might be thinking, oh Lord, what if I created so far? What did I do? What have I been doing all my life? The fundamental truth that you have within yourself, your value about your world, about life, about who you are, that truth is always going to demonstrate and reflect exactly what you believe. It, it always will. 
So, you know, we get excited about this wonderful possibility of creating a life of joy, of peace, of wholeness, and mastery. And if we are willing to look, we also get to see and to mm, take apart, take apart the patterns of error thinking and limiting beliefs that we have been living by perhaps forever. So do you ever wish that you go back through your life and maybe a time in the past and, and erase or press the delete button, delete parts of your story or rewrite it, redo all of that? I can look at my own history and I can feel both, both contempt and compassion for what happened. You know, I, I can feel contempt whether, whether it's for me and the choices I made or compassion for me and the choices I made. And the same goes for other people. But the divine and perfect truth about you and about me and about everybody in the world is that there is that aspect of ourselves, the truth of ourselves, that is unassailably connected to and loved by God. That's one of those verities like gravity that's always been and always will be. So this part of us can never be broken and it can never be confused because it is our divine and true identities. We are creations of spirit. And if no one ever told you that before or if you never heard it before, I want you to take this in. You are a divine, perfect creation of spirit. You are made of that. You are made of that. And nothing has been withheld from you. It's not as if you got a little bit of God and somebody else got a whole bunch more. Nothing has been withheld. You know, when we hear this idea of I am, I guess I should pick this thing up that I dropped to demonstrate gravity. Um, when we hear that we are, oh my gosh, fearfully and wonderfully made. We hear that we are made in the image and likeness of God. We hear that. Do we really know what it means? Do we know that it means more than, wow, you're kind of, you remind me of God. <laughs> I remember you. you. You kind of remind me of God. No, it's more than that. We aren't just merely God adjacent. We aren't God friendly. And we aren't God ish. You and I have the divine and perfect spiritual pattern at our core. The ground of our beingness is forever trying to flood us with its light, with its love, with its joy and its wisdom, all of those qualities which are God, because we have them. We have all of them. Now, the issue is not that we have them, but are we recognizing that we have them? Are we allowing them? Are we willing to stop resisting that greater truth about ourselves? Are we willing to accept that that's a possibility, that we have been created from love, that we are, hmm, that we are not born of sin and error, but that we are born of blessing, blessedness and goodness and love and light. You know, Bishop Shelby Spong, that's who I was trying to get, um, he said, you are not born from original sin, you and I come from original blessing, original blessing. And yet we have this idea that might be in the collective, even if we did not grow up with it, but there's a level of participation that can often happen of, of some sin or something other than God. Like there's a whole bunch of God, but then there's, there's, this, there's something else going on here. There must be something. You know, how could this thing be going on in the world? If that, that there's there's got to be that stuff. So for a moment... Wherever you are in your current trajectory of, yes, I am, or no, I am most certainly not that God stuff, I want to invite you to just consider that this infinite source, which saw need of you in this place and time, didn't give you just a little bit of Godness. It gave you total God. Total God. You have total God. Nothing was withheld or limited, and nothing can be taken from you. Nothing can be withheld except the limits of your own thinking will do that for you. The limits or the fear that you have about whether or not it will work for you, the law will work for you, or you'll be good enough to do it, or you're worthy of it. 
That's the stuff, those are the foxes that nibble on the vine. Those are the things that will get in the way. Napoleon Hill wrote, the only limitation is the one you set up in your own mind. Wow. Take that in. The only limitation is the one you set up in your own mind. We base so much of our thinking on, on what we perceive and, and how we interpret the world around us. We see these experiences, we see stuff out in the world, we see the news, and the images that we tend to dance with the most are the scary ones. Those are the ones that get our attention because they, they, it's almost as if they, they invigorate us, right? They invigorate us. Uh, they make us feel alive. <laughs> they make, adrenaline and fear makes us feel alive. Isn't that odd? And yet, wouldn't it be more, more fulfilling to know that we can feel, feel alive instead of with that fear and that dread, the existential dread of what's going to happen next in Ukraine or in the world or in my life or with my bank account, instead of that, that we can begin to fill our, fill our thoughts with the ideas that we are alive, we feel alive because there are roses to smell, there's love to be shared, there's service to be given, there's curiosity, there's curiosity about life to be experienced, to be thought about, there's gratitude to be expressed, there's giving to be done. You know, when we don't have all the information about that stuff we see in the world, we make up our own stories, right? We make our, up our own stories and we populate them with all sorts of horrible things. And we also make up our own stories about the stuff that happens to us. Like perhaps somebody cuts you off in traffic and, and you take it personally. You take it personally you think, oh God, that guy is such a jerk. He was just waiting to cut me off. I can't believe that. I, red cars always do that to me. I hate red cars because they always just want to cut me off. They hate gray cars. That's right. That's right. So we tell ourselves a story, not perhaps considering that there is no story. And it's not for us to take personally. Maybe it has nothing to do with us. Maybe the stuff that happens only has the meaning we give it. It only has the significance that we give it, which means we get to give it any meaning we want, any significance we want. We can look at a situation and say, this is my blessing, this is my teacher, or this is my curse, this is the evil. Wow, one feels so good, one does not. So those fear stories are the ones we have to start learning how to dismantle. We have to start taking them apart. You know, the stories that tell you that you don't have enough, um, you don't have the love or the power or the presence of God, or the respect of God flowing in and as and through us are the ones that really do get our attention and they get all of our energy. You know, energy flows where your attention goes. It's an old saying, but it's really, really true. It's really true because fear galvanizes us, right? It just really, and anger galvanizes us. And being a victim, that, that gets us going. All of these things as opposed to changing how we are telling ourselves the stories. And the stories might go something like this. Yeah, I know that I've been created in the image and likeness, blah, 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 infinite possibility, but God, you just don't understand. You just don't understand my issues, God. I'm, this is where I'm pretending God's up there. You know I don't believe that. And the conversation might continue. You know, God... You don't know how I grew up. You don't know how much pain I'm in or have to deal with, and you certainly don't know how difficult the people in my life are. And we argue for our limitations. Have you ever noticed that? We argue for our limitations. We have lots of conviction and lots of commitment. And um, I think it was in Jonathan Livingston Siegel where the line was, if you argue for your limitations, they will be yours. They're yours. Congratulations. <laughs> limitations. And it's really as if we're saying, yeah, I know God is infinite and that God is all there is, but I just don't think God has the bandwidth to make my life any better. I just don't think so. So do we really think that all these miracles of life, birth, the stars, oceans, billions and billions of galaxies aren't a big deal and that our lives are just too complicated, that God just doesn't get it? <laughs> this thing that we call life will never be more to us than we are to ourselves. 
it will never be more to us than we are to ourselves. When we believe that we don't get to have a full life, life has only one answer to every question, to every demand made upon it, to every inquiry. It's a one word answer. The universe always says yes. The universe always and only says yes. The universe will always agree with that which we give it. You know, that's the great power and even the paradox of this teaching, that no matter what you and I have told ourselves up till now, we can start in this very moment to tell ourselves a higher truth. We can stop that trajectory. We can change it. We can change our story. And we can change it again tomorrow. We can change it tomorrow at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 8.30, 8.35. We can change our story. We can always tell a greater story. You know, I was reading some Emmett Fox today, and Emmett Fox wrote for years um, as a unity teacher and minister. And he actually was first ordained, I believe, by Norman Vincent Peale. So that goes back quite a long way. Um, and he wrote this. We come into truth, that's a capital T, with our little finger. And the great things will not come to us until we come in with the entire body. The entire body. And that's the rub, right? There's the rub. He goes on to say that... This is no mere spring cleaning of the soul that we have to do. It's not just like a little exfoliation of your life. It's, it's a big major thing here. To come into truth with your entire body is to bring every conscious thought and belief to the touchstone of divine intelligence and divine love. It is to reject every single thing, mental or physical, that doesn't square with that standard. It is to revise every opinion, every habit of thought, every policy, every branch of, of practical conduct without any exception whatsoever. That's quite a commitment. But you know, we've only got this one life. You might as well make it worth it. You might as well do like a whole body commitment here. You know, it's what Paul meant when he said we die daily, that he dies daily. We have to die to all of those things that have, which have so seduced us into fear, the addiction of fear, the addiction of struggle, the addiction of negativity. We must die to those. The death of our participation in all of that ick means that we have room in our lives for that which we want. Now we've got bandwidth. We've got the God bandwidth going on because we have let go of all of the energy, the participation, and the muck and the mire of the stuff that we don't want, that we've been focusing on. In other words, we have turned away from contemplating that which we don't want. So, you know, there's this idea that all things are made new, and it means that we have to be made new. We really, really do. We start with us, our transformation, and making ourselves new. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's in the renewing. We make it new again. It's in the activity, that ing of the new. That's where our lives do transform. And they really do. For most of us, that transformation won't happen like a bolt of lightning. It's gonna, it won't be a sudden epiphany. I wish to tell you it would be. But for most of us, it won't be. But better that it happens in baby steps, thought by thought, word by word, day by day, day by day, moment by moment, we get clearer, we get better. And that gives us the time to look around to, to appreciate the growth, the progress, the upward trajectory that we have taken, that we have created in our lives. When we understand that all the power in the universe has been creating for us and through us according to our ideas of fear and limitation, then we can allow all of that creative power to create for us and through us intentionally according to the ideas of possibility, of wholeness, abundance, of peace, of faith. We get to do that. You know, life isn't random, and yet I think some of us really want to live a random life. And living a random life is like living your life through your rear view mirror. You're always looking back and you're seeing what has already taken place. And you're trying to figure it out. 
And it's important to look at what has got you to where you are today. You know, God bless that broken road because this is where I am and now I can see. That's an important thing. But living an intentional and creatively proactive life means that instead of contemplating what we don't want, we're contemplating and living in the active awareness and feeling of what we do want of what we do want, right? So that we are in that active awareness of it now. Does it sound like a big old game of let's pretend you're darn right? <laughs> it is. And that's okay because our imagination is our connection with God, is the activity of God within us. That is that Christ consciousness. That imagination is the Christ consciousness. Now, if you have a problem with the word Christ, just know that Christ means awake, aware, anointed. It means wisdom. It wasn't Jesus' last name. Christ means aware. So that Christ wisdom, that Buddha wisdom within us, that great knowing, that great knowing. You know, so I'm going to come back to that statement I read at the beginning from Ernest Holmes. We withdraw from the contemplation of existing circumstances and without contending against them. Without contending against them, we create anew. You know, there's only one fundamental energy in the universe, but this energy can be applied constructively or destructively, positively or negatively, because we have free will. We have free will. So when we use it constructively, we're in alignment with God. We're happy. We're fulfilled. There's joy. There's peace. And when we use it destructively, that's when we're hanging out in those realms and dancing those dances with fear, with limitation, with criticism, with condemnation. The contemplation of how bad it was, how bad it is, and how bad it's going to get is not helping the world. And it's definitely not helping or healing you or me. It's just not. So it's really easy right now, if your attention is on the world, the news, events, across the planet, you could fall into a habit of worst case scenario. And FYI, don't ever get into a discussion with me or Dr. Mark about how bad the world is, because we will immediately remind you of your responsibility to participate in the love, not the fear, in the faith, not the hatred, and in the peace, not the worry. We will win that argument, I just promise you. <laughs> we, for the win, yes. And I know we hear it a lot, but yes, we are the ones we have been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. So if you want to stay in fear and catastrophe, that's your choice. And you can have that little finger's worth of truth. But the world I want to create is the one in which God holds sway, not fear. You know, the Course in Miracles teaches us that, that everything either comes from love or from fear. Everything we do or say is rooted in love or in fear. So choose ye this day whom and what you will serve, love or fear. As for me, I will serve love. I will serve peace. I will serve the high and holy truth of life itself ah, for both myself and for all of you and for all life, for all humanity. And I will go into that room, that upper room of pure potentiality, and I will serve God. So I hope you're going to join me there. It's a really good place to be. It's a real good place to be. It's a good place to be. Let's pray. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So we do indeed move into the upper room of consciousness, knowing that as we rise above that which has caught our attention, which has appeared to be unlike God, we are just beginning to vibrate at a higher level of love, a higher level of knowing, of energy, of truth, for we are recognizing that there is but one power and one presence, and it is God. There is but one life, it is God. There is but one energy, it is God. There is but one spiritual law, and that is the truth that right where we are, God is, and we have the ability, the capacity, and the choice to reveal in the highest way the truth that God is. And as I know this about life, about God, and about myself, I know it for everybody here, whether you are connecting with us virtually or you are in this room, I know that we are all in this upper room of willingness, of receptivity, of shift 
into a greater, a greater experience of wholeness. And that means wholeness, not just physical health, but it means wholeness in the level, of, in our relationships, in the politics in the world, in the governance of Russia, of, UK, of Ukraine, of our leaders here. We are in that upper room. We are in that upper room, that high and holy place where we know that truth is all there is. And so we turn away from contemplating anything unlike God. We turn, our, we turn the other cheek so that we see not which has perhaps darkened our, our sense of love and life. We turn and see that which lifts us to a high place of light, of possibility, of pure potentiality. And in that, all life reveals wholeness, reveals health, reveals joy, reveals harmony and peace. For we are that place where peace is. We are the ones we have been waiting for. And indeed, we do what we can with what we have in the time we have in the place we are. And that means we remember who we are. We remember God. I am remembering who I am. And I know for each of us that we are remembering who we are, that we are the divine in form. So we celebrate and we dance that. And I am grateful to know. And I, ex and I say here, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And I invite you to say that with me. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And I release this word into spiritual law and it is done, and so it is. Amen. Thank you. Sing with me. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the Spirit Yes, I'm only here for God I release, I let go I let the Spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God No more with my faith I see the light With my heart in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God Yes, I'm only here for God Yes, I'm only here for God Yes, thank you, thank you and in that same spirit of release and letting go and knowing that we are here for God and as God, I invite you to take your offering and hold it in your hand and place it to your heart and hold it there and say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. That we rest in God and say Amen. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant. We rest 
in God and say amen. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Rest in God and say Announcements. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text to give is inside your program and a QR code is on the back or go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. Wednesday evening today service on May 4th, meditation 6.50 p.m., service 7 p.m. Join us for today's service. The evening will begin with a sound meditation, followed by practitioner Joanne O'Brien, facilitating an hour of sacred chanting, readings, and meditation. There will be a potluck on the patio following, so please bring your favorite dish to share. Men's group, Sunday, May 1st at 11 a.m. This group will meet this Sunday in the Ernest Holmes room and on Zoom. All men are welcome. Women's group, tea party, Sunday, May 1st at 1 p.m. in person only. This group will meet this Sunday in the youth church. All women are welcome to join for tea, treats, and community. And please wear your favorite hat. <laughs> Save the date. On Sunday, May 15th at 1 p.m. in the Sanctuary, climate reality leader Bess Fanning will be giving a free presentation on the climate crisis, California and its solutions. Information is on the patio. Don't miss out on this very informative event. Uh, Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every Monday, uh, every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, I also want to tell you that on the 15th, uh, that is the day we will be feeding our, um, the homeless people of the community. So I will have a sign-up sheet on Sunday, and we're going to invite you to sign up for food, to bring stuff. We want to feed people. That's what we do. One of the messages here at North Hollywood is come for the teaching, you'll stay for the food. Well, this way we take the food to them. So... Um, I think that's it. Oh, I want to thank some people. Barbara Berg was holding vigil um, virtually, and our Facebook Live support was Liz Racy, and Zoom support today was Brenda Jordan and Lynn Romanowski. In the sanctuary tonight, it's Adam Keshen, and Luana Schertzberg has, was your greeter and your usher. Doreen Remo, Nikki Savara, and Blair Thompson have been holding down the fort, technologically speaking. Um, Mary Hyland, your music, we can get it by, you can go, you can email her, Mary, no, it's M-A-R-H-Y-L-C, right, okay, at AOL.com, just grab her on the, on the patio and talk to her. Uh, Sam, thank you, you're a rock star, thank you very much, he's our music director, pulpit support tonight was Carrie Herrera, ministerial student, and um, I'm Reverend Sydney. And by the way, we're going to be heading out to the patio for some coffee and tea after this service. So if you want to hang out and just kind of, you know, socialize, we'd love to have you there. So let's pray and get out of here. Go eat. <laughs> and you can meet my dog. All right. So we just take a moment once again to connect with the truth, the high truth of knowing that right where we are, God is and all is well. So we move out into the world knowing that we are a blessing that we are a blessing both to ourselves, to our families, to everybody around us, and definitely into the greater world. 
So we hold this truth as we move out into the world. And we know that all life is working to support that the, all the power in the universe responds to our word. And we declare peace. We declare peace. We declare harmony. We declare love and joy and wholeness. Because that's what we do. That's who we are. And so it is. Amen. Let's all sing blessed always one last time.